let's set up to it. And we're gonna do this little bowling drill. We're gonna clip one off the tee. Swing to the top, big turn. We're gonna feel that pressure go into the ball of the foot. Nice little draw. Yeah, take that. Love it. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Kerry Gray here on the range today at Trump International in Dubai, here with my good friend, Alex. Alex, pleased to have you on today. Good to have you. Yeah, absolutely. Alex is one of the top coaches, most sought after coaches in the world. And today we're gonna to talk a lot about dynamic movement, where the body, the arms and the club should be, the sequencing of the golf swing, how to get that optimal body position and club position coming into the moment of impact to get the most out of your ball striking. Alex, I'm excited, pumped to have you here. Let's get into it. All right, getting open at the moment of impact. You hear players talk about it all the time. Yes. Right. Uh, we see with a lot of best players that when they strike the golf ball, there will be a certain movement of their body or position that is very common with one player to the next. Let's talk about that. What would we see with the average professional golfer at the moment of impact in regards to, let's just say their shoulder line yep. and their hip line? Yes. What would we be looking at there? Hip line open to shoulder line. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the hips have opened more relative to the shoulders. I think that the average tour pro in terms of where the shoulder line is going to be through impact with an iron, it's going to be fairly square, maybe a fraction open. But for, for the average understanding, if we say that the shoulders are fairly square through impact, the hips are definitely open. Great. So if I use this as a reference across my shoulders yes. and you can use your club as a reference across my hips, we would generally see the professional golfer anywhere between, let's just say relatively square and about 10 degrees yep. open with that shoulder line. Yes. Right? And the hips would be more open than that. Correct. And we see usually about 30 degrees. Yeah, okay. correct. Yeah, absolutely. So when it comes to then working on that, it's important not to get fixated on those degrees. Absolutely we, right. We don't want to get to a point where we're, is that five, is that 10, is that 30? Maybe if I lock this out, because once again, we're not swinging the club through positions. It's not dynamic, it's not athletic, and you're certainly not going to be able to recreate that in the 0.25 of a second that you make your downswing. Exactly, yeah. But we see players trying to work on getting open all the time. Yes. Now, what are some of the common errors that you see players make that come to you out here that when they're trying, they might be explaining what they're doing in your swing. You always ask them, what are you working on with your game at the moment? Mm -hmm. And they say, well, get to the top and I feel like I can get a little bit more power out of my, my downswing and my ball striking. So I'm just trying to get really open. Yes. Trying to achieve that position that you see on tour. Yes. So for starters, a lot of players, they're trying to add that rotation with a poor depth of backswing. Correct. Okay. So they're starting from a point that if they get open, if they start rotating and if they rotate with their upper body too aggressively to start that downswing, they are going to steepen the golf club like crazy. Yeah, absolutely. So as time goes on and the more lessons that we do, we start to realize that we're very much a, a setup and a backswing coach a lot of the time in lessons yes. because even from that position, you just give yourself or the majority of players just such a better chance and opportunity to strike the golf ball in a reasonable manner, right? You certainly do. So if I'm in a position where I'm happy with my setup, I'm feeling great over the ball, and then I'm a player that doesn't create enough depth. So let's say I pull the arms a little bit too early off the, yeah. the ball. I don't create enough sort of thoracic or upper body turn as we get into this position. Let's say I get here, right? Yep. We are narrow. So the distance between the hands and my trail shoulder is very close. My wrist is generally going to extend or Most cup often into is. this position. Yeah. And then from there, if I try and open, we are in all sorts right now, aren't we? Correct. Okay. Yeah, and that's that's exactly it, is that it's understandable, okay, putting ourselves into their shoes. Mm -hmm. If they try to open, they haven't learned yet how to disassociate. Okay. Right. Most of these golfers, they haven't understood that we're not trying to aggressively open the shoulder line. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and when we do, when we start that downswing with a very aggressive motion of pulling the left shoulder out of the way, driving that trail shoulder upward towards the golf ball, that force that the rotation is going to provide to the golf club, everything is going to be sent outward. And we just can't afford to get that golf club that steep in no. that part of the downswing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's say that we are in a relatively functional backswing position. So from here, what is a good way to get open 
and then let's say what we see with the majority of recreational golfers. They're trying to pull the upper body. Yes. Right? So they're not understanding that maybe there's a sequence between what we do with the lower body and the upper body. Yes. And then what about the arms and the forearms and the grip and all that sort of situation? So I'll, I'll start by talking through what the average golfer does. Okay. okay. They, they get to the top and let's, let's assume that they're in a healthy position at the top of the backswing. Mm -hmm. Their attempt to get open often leads with this pulling of that lead shoulder. And as you can see, what's happened with your path of the hands is that everything has worked out towards the golf ball. Mm -hmm. That sends the golf club into a steeper pattern mm -hmm. that now we're either going to then need to back out of it to try to shallow the golf club, mm -hmm. or we're going to travel across the golf ball, cutting across it. Okay. Yeah. So what we want to learn is how to delay the opening of the upper body relative to the lower body. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the position that we get into, go to the top of the backswing again for me. So we've got a great turn. We've turn that trail side back with hand paths in a good spot. I want you to feel as though if I hold you here, you can start to create that pressure shift into that lead side so as I, you, yeah, go ahead. I, when I do this, am I shifting into the ball of my foot, the heel of my foot? You're going to be initially feeling as though you put pressure into the ball of your foot. Okay. That's the first piece. Because at this point right now, if we look at where your hips are, they haven't opened up aggressively. Correct. We've created that pressure shift to start that mm -hmm. motion. Once we get into that foot, we can then push back into the ground to extend that knee and turn that hip out of the way. So just a, a quick side note on that. And this is incredibly important for what I found with coaching players. It's got a lot to do with their left foot flare at address. Yes. Right. So if we're sitting up into this position and I create a functional backswing position here, let's say my foot is straight on, if yes. not even pigeon toed. Well, it is incredibly hard for me to actually shift my pressure anywhere close to the ball of my foot. Exactly. Because this knee is going to stay pointed in for too long. Yes. You can see my backside starts to move out in such a way that it actually extends over my kneecap. And we're in all sorts right now. Yeah, nothing so, good happens from there. Yeah, absolutely. We see with the, the average professional golfer anywhere between 30 and 45 degrees of left foot flare. And for a multitude of reasons from this functional backswing position, you can just almost feel like this left knee goes over yes. the ball of the left foot. Correct. So when we do that, it actually shifts pressure in such a way where it achieves what you were just talking about. Exactly. Yeah, great. Now, Very similar to the, that's the feedback that somebody's going to give you if you're squatting. Okay, yeah. if you're squatting, you do have your feet slightly turned outwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and somebody working on you on that squat pattern is always going to say, try to make sure that the knees work in line with the toes. Okay, the knees working inwards or too aggressively outwards, both of those are going to create problems. We are ensuring that with that foot flare, that allows us as we work into that lead foot, it keeps the knee tracking in line with the toes of the feet. Yeah, okay, we, we wouldn't want that knee to stay bent inwards here. Because mm -hmm. again, as you said, you're going to get your hip outside the knee. Mm -hmm. We don't want that. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel very stuck here. And that's Correct. where we'll, we'll actually see players stand up at that exactly. point in time. Mainly because their body's reacting to not shifting the pressure correctly. They've got no room, so then they stand up as a result. Exactly right. Yeah. So one thing I also like about this lead foot flare, and we can briefly touch on the right foot flare for the right-hander, allowing that depth of rotation. So if you feel inhibited, it's usually because you could get a little bit more flare here, which yes. opens that up. Yes. So a little bit of foot flare in the right foot for the right-hander, then shifting down into the lead side but also with this foot open, what that does is that actually encourages then this lead hip to move up and around and extend. Yes, yes. I think this is, this is the big piece here is that players are looking at this the wrong way. Mm. Okay, they see the images and they hear people, the announcers talking about just how open a given player gets at impact. And they say, okay, well, if Rory is here at impact, he must be getting there from just spinning. Mm. Yeah. Okay, but in actuality, this is happening from how they use the ground. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're pushing into the ground and that pressure into the ground moves those limbs causing the pelvis to open up. So your, your pressure that you're delivering back into the ground through that left side, because you have, let's think, you've got knee flex right here. Oh, yeah. We've got knee flex, we've got an opportunity to create extension. The force that you drive this way is going to work back up through you and send this hip out of the way. And I, I can just feel that transfer of energy into that club head at the moment. Exactly. Going back to that whipping analogy that we we're talking about earlier. Correct. Yeah, fantastic. So when we're putting this all together, right, and I want to work on this movement, what should I do? If we want to work on getting open, mm. okay, the first thing I would always try to tell people is to get open, we must ensure that we have the golf club traveling wide enough and shallow enough. Okay, great. We need to have time to get open. 
Great. So I'm creating a big turn. I've got a little bit of foot flare, which allows me to do so. Yes. I'm wide, so the distance between my trail hand and my trail shoulder. I'm not stiff and rigid, I'm relaxed. But if you create a functional turn, you'll find that the club will naturally stay wide unless yes. you're trying to pull the arms off the ball. And then from there, getting open is more about this downswing movement, creating the separation between the lower body and the upper body. Yes. The arms then do what? They naturally... The arms will fall down under the torso. Correct, correct. And one thing we're gonna add onto this from the, the face on, another position that we see players trying to achieve so much is this one right here. Yes. And we see players do that. Now, the way that a professional gets in that, if you look at my shoulders, you see they're still slightly closed. Yes. We generally see amateur golfers do this by pulling the shoulders into position and the lead arm actually hasn't unloaded off the chest at all. Exactly. Which maybe in a drill is a feeling that you could work on, but in the swing, it's certainly not a conscious feeling. Correct. That you're pulling the handle down, but we're swinging to the top, that shift of pressure, the arms naturally unload, which is shallowing the shaft. Bang, there we go. But you can see my body's in such a great position from here that I've got the room to then rotate and I am open. You are. You have time to, yeah. okay? The golf club, where the head is, is behind you enough that when you get into that spot where those arms are back underneath you in that downswing, I, I'm not incredibly open at this point, but the mm. club is trailing enough that if I then push back into the ground, that's what's going to open me up. Yeah. Okay, it's not from this obsession or effort just to spin. Mm. That doesn't create any power. Yeah. Just sends the golf club working more out in front of me too steep. So we, we get open by buying time, mm -hmm. width and shallowing, and by us being able to deliver that force back into the ground. So uh, a drill to put it all in between. So we've got enough width at the top of the swing. We're then creating this dynamic stretch. I'm shifting my pressure. My arms are unloading underneath my body. That gets them in such a position where I have the room and the ability to then turn and rotate through the ball. A lot of this happens without me thinking about it. Yes. But if I am a player who just subconsciously sets up to a golf ball for whatever reason from the top of the swing, I'm then swinging down. We check that you've got enough room in the backswing, but I'm still Yes. Opening my shoulders. Yes. What's a great drill that we could use to rectify that? Okay. So, so we need to keep our body closed a little bit longer. Is that what you're saying? I would say the upper body. Great. But let's let's think of keeping that shoulder line closed longer. Okay. okay so we're, we're going to execute a big turn. Mm -hmm. We're going to establish as much width as we possibly can. Perfect. Okay. Then what I want you to be able to feel as you start down is I want you to keep your back to the target, mm -hmm. okay? Your chest away from the target as long as possible. As you're shifting through, that right foot is going to work behind you. This is actually, in a sense, going to keep you closed longer. The club is going to also stay behind. That combination is going to buy us the time that we need. Awesome, yeah. We do see tour players work on this all the time. And yes. There's a lot of drills out there where you could actually have a stick or something like that to kind of give you some awareness of it. Uh, when that trail leg kind of pokes out too much towards the ball. And we see this Disco Dave move where the leg kicks exactly. out so much and the exactly. body kicks out. So a great drill, a bowling drill as such, uh, as if you were 10-pin bowling and that leg kind of kicks behind in that position. You can actually work on just doing small swings from there. So we're creating some room and then coming through like that. Yes. Now, what this is, does in a simplistic fashion is slows down the whole body as such, but specifically, the upper body because if you try and do this motion from the top and you go like that you are going to fall backwards yeah. so facing the camera in this direction here we're going to set up we're going to swing to the top and then as i'm starting down because i'm shifting my pressure in to the ball of my lead foot my back foot is sliding back which at the moment of impact just makes me feel that as i'm coming through my body is just staying a little bit more facing the ball and we don't need to be too uh, over the top in regards to creating the perfect amount of rotation. Really at the end of the day, as much as we would like to try and achieve a perfect position, sometimes it's necessary to exaggerate on the way of getting there. Let's set up to it and we're gonna do this little bowling drill. We're gonna clip one off the tee, swing to the top, big turn. We're gonna feel that pressure go into the ball of the foot. Nice little draw. Yeah, take that. Love it. 